All right, so we're going to do a very, very quick review on what we have done last week, and then uh, kind of complete the, not complete, go more in depth in dynamic memory allocation, and that's going to bring us to uh, um, that one session uh, that was missed and all the things and like that. It's going to be all synced and done properly, so we're going to be okay. I don't think you missed the session, but other sections did. For some reason, this section, uh, this section took longer, which is okay. Again, I don't rush it. Whatever we do, that's, um, that's how it's done. So first, we talked about polymorphism. We talked about uh, 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 overloading a function. We said, unlike C language functions in, uh, in uh, uh, C++, can be uh, uh, created uh, using the same name, but different arguments. And because C++ actually uses the signature as name and argument, the names would be different when they are actually called. Therefore, we can actually create diff same function in different ways, and hence polymorphism. Ah, I think this light should go yeah. off. Yeah, for me too, actually, I was thinking of being <laughs> operated on, like, <laughs> and, uh, anyway, so, uh, so when we, when we look at, the, so we eliminated some of the redundant uh, uh, overloading that we have done by applying default value for the arguments, and we said when you set a default value for an argument in a function, C plus, yes. All right. Better? Like there. And I, uh, again, for those people who have eagle eyes, please go to the end of the thing. Those who have weak eyes like me, come front. So I can have more real estate over here. Not, it, it's, this is perfect, actually, now. Um, what I want to say? Yeah. So that's that. So yeah, so the default value for the arguments eliminate the need of overloading a function with the same logic. If I want to just skip the arguments from the uh, end of the list. So the very first one, if I put 79 over here, it means function line can be called only with the character and length not provided. When compiler sees that this is missing, it applies 79 to it by default. And we add a dash over here for fill, so line even can be called without any argument and then uh, F79 will be provided for length and a dash for fill, and it's going to run. But we have to make sure that we understand we cannot, we cannot make the overload conflict another one, which means I cannot say, okay, and I'm going to set a default value for this one too. If you do that, then you're going to have two ways of having line without arguments, and the compiler is going to get confused. So if you actually create, call the line without any, let me see if it's app. This is not going to compile because I'm just opening the files. It's not in the project. But if I do something like this, because this line has the fault for everything, it can be called without argument. This one has the fault value for a single argument. It can be called without. Therefore, there's a conflict. So uh, it doesn't do magic. It just creates the fault argument. So you have to make sure you don't create any complex. That was operator overloading. So let me just close the things that, no, don't save. We talked about giving new name to already existing things in, in uh, to already existing objects in C++. Now I'm introducing the concept object. We talked about instance, and everybody got confused what the heck instance is. We, we went through and asked, can anybody explain what does it mean, instance? And we had to go quite a number of, so we don't. So an instance is essentially when you have a design, you are making something out of it, that becomes the instance of the design. In C++, an object is an instance. So if I have a class, you instantiate the class. You have a, a class employee. You create an object out of, it, out of it called E. Then E becomes an instance of class employee. So uh, integer i, i is the instance. 
int is the class, and also integer i, i is the class, sorry, integer is the class, and i is the object. So remember, we refer to uh, instances of classes as objects too. So remember, object, it means something that is created, instantiated of something. So if I have double d, d is an object of type double. If I have student s, s is an object of type student. Just listen to the terminology and get used to it. So why we can create new names, we can give new names to, our, to, to existing objects in C++, so we can refer to them in many different ways. We call that a reference, and the syntax is an ampersand after int, after the type. So type reference, type ampersand is called type reference. Never call it ampersand. This is an integer reference, for example, which means R becomes a new name for I. And we have only one integer in here, and that is either I or R, two names for the same object. Are we all okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Three? Sold. The next thing we need to know that an ob a reference cannot exist by itself. The definition of reference is a new name for an already existing object. If you do not have an already existing object, you cannot have a reference. We cannot just create integer reference x and semicolon. We can't do that. It, that x must refer to an already existing thing. Okay? So if I just type one, uh, create one reference, it's going to fail and it's not going to work out. So essentially, if I say over here, integer reference x, that is an error. You cannot do that because this x is uh, uh, a reference without anything. So this is syntax error. It's not even a logical or anything. A compiler won't even compile it. Okay, since x must be reference of something. I could have written, I could have written integer reference x is set to r. Then x and r and i, they're all the same object. Two, three different names for the same object. Appreciate the fact that when I say integer i10 and integer reference r, there is no difference between r and i after that. You cannot tell which one is the original. Got it? So after you create a reference, they are equally reference of something. So because of that fact, you can actually call the name of the variable its reference. So if I say integer i set to then 10, the reference of that integer is i. Reference essentially means name. Okay? And you can have many names for the same object in C++. Are we all okay with this? All right. Next. <clears throat> difference between initialization and, eh, sure, let's save it. Difference between initialization and setting. Is this the one? This is the one. Difference between initialization and setting. Line number eight and nine, it's not initialization, it's setting. Line number four, five, six, seven, they are all initialization, different syntax, of the same thing. So integer i set to 10, that is not set. I just use the common mistake, common mistake that is okay to say. If when you say integer i set to 10, essentially you are saying integer i that is initialized to 10, which means i will not exist without a 10 in it. As soon as it comes to being, there is 10 inside. Where in line number eight, j is first garbage, then it becomes 20. So the line number nine, this is called assignment. You will see later on, okay? And this is an extremely important fact in next couple of weeks when we're going to go deep in uh, C++ object orientation stuff. You have to understand and appreciate that this is an assignment. This is initialization. They both look like assignment, but this is actually equal to five or six or seven, okay? These are all initialization. So like this 100, k becomes 100, like this m becomes 300, and the curly bracket, the aggregate initialization, the, cur the, the curly bracket is a new thing in C++. When I say new, it's not like yesterday. I mean like <laughs> seven years. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. So, so it's, uh, yeah. So, and uh, 
if you don't know what is a default value or for something or you're just lazy to do it like for example if I have a pointer and I want to set it to null PTR instead of writing integer pointer P is equal to NULLPTR semicolon I can simply say integer pointer P empty curly bracket in front of it it will be defaulted automatically so this aggregate is very handy and very quick to do things with so that was the difference between initialization and settings. And then we need to, needed to know how the functions are called. And we say whenever we are calling a function, and this is C, it's not C++. Whenever you call a function, the values you are passing as arguments, as argument values to a function, are used to initialize that argument when the function is invoked. When a function is invoked, the information inside of them are getting created. Essentially, an integer called val will get created like a local variable inside foo. But because you are calling it, that 20 is used to initialize the argument. So that argument will not exist without anything other than 20 when it's called at line 11. Okay? It will be created with 20 in it. So in here, when I say foo name, name is an address. It holds the address of Fred in it. When I pass it, the value, that address is used to initialize S. So S essentially will be pointing to the same place that name is pointing. That's why these are both the same. You can do potatoes or potatoes, same thing. Actually, I rather write this. Okay, the other one is kind of a kindergarten version of an array. Okay, we all know that arrays are simply pointers, so use pointers, don't use empty brackets anymore. That's for kids. Okay, so now I can say name that is like this. It is actually the S pointer. We will grab the the uh, the address of name, and by mistake. In IPC 144, we say this is passed by value, this is passed by address. Wrong. Nothing in C language is passed by address. There is no such mechanism in C or C++. We don't have such a thing. Everything is passed by value. What has happened to be by, passed by value is an address. An address is just an unsigned integer. So what happens, this Arrays address is passed by value to s. s is a variable holding the address. Name is a variable holding the address, but they point to the same location. So the location is passed by address, but name itself is passed by value. Everything in C language is passed by value. There is no pass by address ever. We don't have such a mechanism in C language. All right? Can you see now? <laughs> Yeah, I was like, okay, let me just see if I can actually bring it to the other side so I can. Better? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So, remember, this table is not a good real estate. <laughs> not a good view, okay? All right. So, yeah. So, uh, what was I saying? Um, yeah. And in this case, I have a literal value, Jack. What is the difference between literal value and a regular value? Pass. So what is the difference between 20 and integer i that has 20 in it? What is the difference between literal value and a regular? So if I write something like this, at this point, what is the difference between i and 20? Yeah, at this point. I say the integer i20. No, I'm saying, what is the difference between i and 20? Uh, i is an object. i is an object, and 20 is the value of the object. No, it's a literal value. Literal value, yeah. Okay. I want you to understand that literal values, anytime you're writing it, they actually occupy space. So compiler actually creates a place, an integer, and puts 20 in it. Don't think that you put 20, it's nothing. It's, it's somewhere. Okay? And... But the difference between i and 20 is that i is a constant literal value. You cannot change its value. It doesn't have a handle. You cannot see where 20 is. 
20 is somewhere that compiler knows and not you. But I is a place exactly like 20. The difference is that it has a handle. You can put 20 in it, 40 in it. You can change the value, access it later on, see what the value is inside. Got it? So literal. So the, the reason I'm bringing that up is that in here I'm saying name and I'm passing name. Name is not a constant value. It's changed. I can pass it to S. S is constant, which means when name is passed over here, function foo is not allowed to change it. It has a read-only view on name. Do we all understand it? It means I can change the name in main, but I cannot change it in foo. Okay? Because of that fact, it's a good idea Let's change the name of these functions print, okay? Print by nature, what does it mean? It means to show something. When you show something, do you change it? No, you don't change it. If I told you, look, my T, the T is not going to evaporate. You just see it. You know there is C. I'm not going to change the value by showing it to you, right? So you have to enforce that, okay? In here, I'm saying print int val. Am I enforcing it? The answer is yes, because I'm getting a copy of val. Because it's a copy of val, I change that val, nothing happens to what I have outside. So I'm good. In here, I'm doing print. This is dangerous. I'm receiving an address. When you know where something is, you can go poke it, right? It's the same thing. I'm passing an address. Because I'm passing an address, I have to ensure that's a read-only access. Although, if I take it off, the student Famous phrase comes out, but it works. No, it doesn't work. It works, yeah, it prints, but not in a proper way. Okay? It's like if you want to show how your living room looks like and you want to post something on internet to so show this is the decoration of my living room, that's constant. Inviting the entire world to your living room is not constant. Bringing everybody to your, give the key to everyone, come to my house, see my, that's that one. They both work, people will see it. But if one of them is a thief, you lose everything. Okay? Remember, following logic is essential. We are not doing something like dumb people. We are actually making sure that the business logic is enforced. Okay? If I did not put constant, I could not print jack. Because jack is a literal value, because it's literal, it means it is not changeable. Not changeable. It is constant. You say Sorry, it in a not changeable. Yeah, thank you. Not it means it's it is it is constant. Okay, so that's what we need to do. We okay down to this point? We understand how functions are called. Good. Okay. <clears throat> we use that. We use that feature of the combination of reference and the fact that the arguments are initialized when they are called to take advantage of it. So for example, in here, my function set to 0 wants to set a value to 0. What I do, I'm going to write integer reference val. No, I can't because references must be initialized, otherwise they can't work. And I would say an argument by nature is initialized to the value that is passed to it. Therefore, I can use a reference here. So when I actually say set to zero i, what it's happening is that integer reference val is i, so val becomes a new name for i in that function call. Therefore, when I change the value of val, I'm actually changing the value of i. As I told you, when the reference comes, you cannot differentiate between the two. Right? And this feature makes changing stuff in a function much easier than C. In C, you had to pass a pointer. Then say target of pointer is something. And then when you call, you had to pass the address of something to it. We don't need to do that anymore. We need to sometimes for some reason, but it could be avoided if we want to. So all you need to do is to pass a reference, then you do the function call as you do for any other function call, and it just happens. And that was reference. And we said when we say reference, when you make something reference, that thing really becomes a new name for something. 
That's so true that even if you make a function return a reference, the entire function becomes a new name for something. So if I have, for example, global variable tax in here, and I return the reference of that tax using the tax function, the entire function becomes a new name for tax. Therefore, I can put the tax function at left side of an assignment operator where I cannot do for a regular function. The whole function, the tax, becomes a new name for the tax value. Therefore, I can say the tax is yada yada. Are we good? Yes. Mm -hmm. I takes an I takes an space. It's an integer, four bytes of memory. It has a name on it, and the ten also takes space, but we don't know where it is. It's somewhere. Compiler knows where it is. It needs to have a ten to put it in your eye, right? So it has to put it somewhere. Like, I just want you to understand anything you write in your programs, they get translated into machine code. OK? Anything you write, you that semicolon that you put over there, it means something. OK? That's why we have to be so strict and we have to understand. Uh, like, that's the reason defined statements are not good. Because defined statement is a search and replace. When you, for example, have the tax value as a defined state, as a defined value, and right, it's not a macro, it's def define is search, def just define, not macro. If you make a defined statement for it, then you are essentially telling to the compiler to search and replace all the TAXs with 0 0.13. So you're going to have 900 0.13s written everywhere. Of course, the compiler is hopefully efficient enough to uh, create, uh, to write one 0 0.13 and say, okay, this is another one, I'm, I'm going to use the old one. But if you use this defined statement in several of these different files, each file will create a new one. Why? When you can create a constant integer, a constant double value and call it tax, and use the constant instead, which means you are specifying the memory and tag it and say this is not changeable, now I'm going to give the tag to everyone. So the compiler doesn't have to do optimization anymore. Okay? So that's, uh, we call it crazy references. I told you when we come to uh, 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 index overloading, you will see that that's, that comes really handy. And finally, we talked about arrays. What are arrays? And we said, we said, we said, what did we say? Hello? What did we say? What did we say? What did we say? Z-A-A. We said, we said, We said, <laughs> found it, sorry, it was just not named properly. We said when you are creating an array, what happens is that in your executable, a chunk of memory is created, the address of the beginning goes to a pointer, therefore a pointer uh, points to the beginning of the array. And that's to set how the mechanism of the array works, okay? And that's why you cannot change the size of an array when the program is running because your program is inside your executable. Sorry, your array is inside the executable. When it's compiled and done, executable size cannot change. It is what it is, and that's how it's going to run. To fix that problem, we said we can actually, while the program running, create the array manually ourselves. How did we do that? We said that we're going to ask the operating system after we finalized and understood how much memory we need, we can ask the operating system to create uh, uh, to, to occupy few uh, objects in the memory back to back and give us the address. So I can put the address in a pointer and replicate 
an array myself. The difference is that the array that I have, when I do it that way, is not going to be inside the executable anymore. It's going to be in the, <clears throat> in the heap, as what we call it, shared memory between all, compu all computer programs, all executables. So what happens in my program, I'm going to say, operating system, give me new integer, five of them. This new returns, if successful, if there is enough space for five integer, it will return its address to us. We put the address in a pointer A, and as of that moment, A becomes an array of five integers, exactly like the other one. And it's treated and works, and it's, and it's treated the exact same way. So <clears throat> to demonstrate what an array is, I wrote this program, and I had integer A5 with five stuff in it, then I create, and I showed you if I use target of A, it actually shows the first one. So I can actually treat an array like a pointer. And then I said, I can say integer pointer is A. Now P can be treated as an array, even though it's a pointer. So pointers, arrays, potatoes, potatoes. So a pointer, so if we consider, if we think that an array is like a snake with a head and a tail, a pointer is a snake with only a head and no tail. <laughs> Okay, so that's it. So, but they are both the same. Sometimes, you know, have you seen those freaky thing, a, head, a snake with two heads? That's when you have a pointer pointing to the beginning of the of another area. So this is actually a, a snake with two heads, a and a p, and they both point to the same place. I just saw somebody looked at me like, "What's what a an awful example?" <laughs> it's like, "Oh, really?" All right. So, so. Yeah, and because of that fact, and, and we said that the, the only difference between a pointer and a regular integer, we know pointers are regular integers. Pointers hold a number in it. What is a number? What happened to my microphone? What is a number that I hold in a, in a pointer? It's an, ad, is an address. It's an address. So an address is what? An address is, it's, is it on? The light is on? OK, good, perfect. Leave it on. So an address is what? Do you remember? Yes, is, is where, where we save the Where is where we have our, our variable in the memory, OK? So what is, but what is the nature of that address? Is, what is it? Is it like uh, uh, 32 Young Street? Or, <laughs> or it's, what is, it, what is the type of that address? Do you know? It's an integer. Pass it back. What type of an integer? Can I have an address minus 52? Can address be negative? Can I have yeah. minus 67th? Uh, it's, it should be only. No, we can't. It should be only positive. We can, you count, I cannot say minus one student, minus two. You don't do that, right? You go one, two, three, four, five. You count positive numbers. So addresses are unsigned integers, positive integers. Are we all okay with this? An address cannot be negative. Are we all okay with this? Okay, so what the devil is the difference between an address and an unsigned integer? If that's the case, why they did it, why did they did even create a pointer? The reason is that unlike integers, if you add one to a pointer, instead of one, the size of the target will be added to it. Okay? What I mean is that if you look at what we have in here, oh, <laughs> two mains. <laughs> All right. So as, as we have created this, if I, if I write over here, see out unsigned, uh, a and C out unsigned P and obviously I'm just going to say over here A so we know this is A maybe what I'm saying is redundant but it's important so if I print these two things it shows it shows the address of two places. Look, they are identical. If, some, if you can actually read them, that number, that is the address of the array A 
in my memory. Okay? Now, the difference is that if I, so I cannot change A. Why? Because it's a constant thing. If I could change A, then I could lose the, the array, right? So compiler won't allow you. A is a constant integer pointer. It's an int, not a constant, not, not a constant integer pointer. It's integer pointer constant A, which means you cannot point to anywhere else. You can change the target of A, but you cannot change A itself. That's how the, the name of an array is created. Otherwise, if you change A, then the, <laughs> the array is lost. We don't want it, right? But P is not. So what I'm going to do over here is this. If I say over here, so what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to say unsigned, unsigned P in because if I just print P, it's going to print hexadecimal. That's why I'm doing unsigned, OK? So I'm going to call it over here P value. And I'm going to set that one to unsigned P. I'm getting lots of uh, warnings, but ignore it. You're going to learn how to uh, get rid of those warnings. So if I print P val over here, the, the result's going to be the same. Forget about these warnings. You see that? The result is the same. Obviously, every time I call the program, the array is Created somewhere else, right? So that's why the address is different. Now, this is what I'm going to do. Take a look. I'm going to, and I'm going to add, and I'm going to show the unsigned P2. So I have, so this is PVAL. And the other one is going to be just P. Please pay attention. And one last time, they're all the same. Are we OK? All right. Now take a look. I'm going to add 1 to P. And I'm going to add 1 to P val. So I'm adding 1 to 2 to, to two variables. One is an unsigned integer. The other one is a pointer, integer pointer. I just added one to both of them. Take a look. Oh, I should print it too. It would be nice. I forgot to print it. And in here, I'm going to say plus one. Because I cannot change A, I just add 1 to it when I'm printing it. OK? So all I'm doing over here is adding 1 to two addresses and adding 1 to an unsigned int. And when it runs, this is what happens. Take a look. The unsigned is added by 1, but the pointers are added by 4, because the next integer in memory is 4 bytes further. That's the only difference between a pointer and an unsigned integer. One, for a pointer, it's size of its target. So if you have employee pointer, and employee is 512 bytes long, if you add one to the employee pointer, 512 will be added to it. Because next employee is 512 bytes further. Are we OK? You look like a question mark. Are we okay? All right, all right. So that, but this is just knowledge, okay? I'm not asking, this is all OP345. But you need to know this to appreciate the rest of the stuff we are going through, okay? Just know it and forget it, okay? Know it and understand it. But you don't need to answer any question about it. <laughs> Do we understand this now? Okay, so that's that. So, uh, yeah, so I'm going to say over here uh, a difference between pointers and pointers and difference between pointers and unsigned ints.cpp. 
And this is not C by CPP, by the way. This is C. This is all C. It has nothing to do with C++ language, OK? But of course, C++ owns this because C++ is C, right? <coughs> so that's that one. And then after that, we talked about dynamic memory allocation, which was, which was, which was this. No, it wasn't that. Was it this? Yeah, it was this, yeah. And then we talked about dynamic memory allocation. We said that it's such a, it's such a simple question, such a simple query to write a program that reads se several integers and print them in reverse order, such a trivial thing is impossible to be done without dynamic memory allocation because you can never know how many, how many numbers the user is going to enter. If, if it's uh, the, the numbers that each Canadian guess, it's going to go around what? More than 30 million? And if it's going to be uh, just marks in a class, it's going to be 35. If it's a test, maybe it's just three of them. So we don't know. Because we don't know how many it is, we have to ask when the program is executing and do it manually. So manual dynamic memory, manual memory allocation is dynamic memory allocation. Something that you do it yourself. So what we do, the syntax for it is, as well, we said, like we're going to say how many integers. Uh, let me actually do, change that. I'm going to change that to doubles. I'll tell you why. So it's just double values instead of uh, integer values. Do I need to change anything else? So I have double nums, which means the pointer to doubles. How many doubles? I'll get the size. Then I say new double size. If nums is equal to null PTR, we don't have enough memory. Other than that, we're going to get all the numbers. C in knows it's already a double, so it's going to do it automatically because of polymorphic extraction operator. And then I'm going to print them in reverse order, and I'm going to delete all the nums. OK, so one more time, what do we do when the program runs? This program is designed in a way that is going to do this. So program, programs, what is, oh, sorry, 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 wrong one. Stop, stop, stop. Copy. Yeah, let's run it one more time. <clears throat> so program starts, and as it starts, you will see that number has some garbage value in it. It doesn't know what. You see, question mark, what the heck? It doesn't say even null because it doesn't know what's in there. And size is the same thing. It's some garbage over there. It says, how many doubles over here, it says? And I'm going to say three. So I'm going to get three doubles. It's going to say, give me new double, three of them. So an array of three doubles will get occupied in the heap, heap and the address is passed to nums. So it comes in here, and now nums is actually pointing to something, which is garbage, of course. And please appreciate the fact that it doesn't know how many. It's just a pointer. for. All that C language knows is there that your num is pointing to a double. It doesn't know there is a double after that. We know it. Okay? The compiler doesn't know. Operating system knows it. The compiler doesn't know. Okay? Our C language doesn't know. There is no way for it to know how big that array is. We're going to fix that problem with object, ori with object orientation later in the semester. OK, so now I'm going to say, is nums null? No, it's not, so I have enough memory. Now I'm going to start getting the numbers <coughs> one by one. So I'm going to get the numbers one by one. Run the cursor was what? Control F10, OK. So 1.1, 2.3, and 3.3. So I get the numbers. The three numbers are got. I, I get three numbers. I have an array. That is exactly three doubles, so perfect match. Then I'm going to start from two and go right down to zero and print everything in reverse order. 
which is going to be obviously something like this. And then after it's done, I have to give the numbers back to the operating system, and that's deleting. Are we okay with this? So that's dynamic memory allocation. You decide while the program is running, how much memory do you need? Like for example, you have a file, okay? That file has 300,000 lines. You, and each line is, say, I don't know, uh, uh, one double value. You want to see what is the memory you need to read the whole thing. All you need to do is to go through the, the, uh, the file and count backslash ends once. You start from the beginning, you go down and count all the backslash ends. It tells you how many lines. So you know how many numbers are there. You go back, you create an array with that number of lines, and after you do that, now you have the array exactly to the size of the file. Now you go back, start from the beginning of the file, either you use the rewind function, or you close it and open it again, and you now you start reading doubles one by one. And when you're done, you exactly read the exact same amount that you have in your array. Are we okay with this? And this happens in many different ways, okay? We can, there are so many different ways of doing this that you'll see, okay? And one of the good things about this dynamic memory is that if you don't have enough memory halfway through, you can always resize your memory. You can always have a pointer, see, oh, I got 10, it's more, I'm gonna add five more. You create a pointer, you put 15, you copy everything into 15, you delete the old one, now you start using this one. You'll see, I'll show you the mechanism of how to do it, how to resize memory. So you can keep resizing and expand your memory as you're going through, okay? So we're gonna... <clears throat> Yes. All right. I, I just thought of a workshop for it. For, 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 we don't have a dynamic memory allocation workshop out yet, do we? OK, so it is out already? Did I? Yeah. Ah, damn it. OK, so next semester. <laughs> All right. Well, what I want to talk about over here is this. Now I'm going to do something that does not make sense at all. I'm going to do something now that does not make sense at all. You never need to do something like this in this scenario. I'm just doing for the sake of syntax so you know what is the syntax of doing so. The syntax of allocating an array, we know. How do we do it? What if I want to just have one variable, one object dynamically allocated? It doesn't really make sense because, for example, I want to make that size dynamic. It's crazy because size by itself has only four bytes, right? If I make it dynamic, I have to have an eight-byte pointer and then allocate four bytes and with that eight bytes pointer to have four bytes. So I'm wasting eight bytes. So it is really not necessary to do something like that, okay? Absolutely not necessary. But I'm just doing it so you can see how it's done. Okay, so let's say I want that size to be dynamic too. If that's what I want to do, I have to change it to a pointer, so I'm going to make that size pointer, right? And then I have to actually allocate memory for it, so I'm going to say size is equal to new int. That's it, nothing else. So si compile it. I'm going to ask the operating system, give me size of one integer. It's going to give the size and give it back, and this size only points to one integer. Therefore, when I'm reading it, I have to say read to target of size, right? And then get double with target of size, because everything is now in the target of size, and loop up to target of size, and loop from target of size minus one. I'm just changing everything to pointers. But at the end, at the end, I have to delete that size. Now, in here, I am detecting if the double is successful or not, so I have to bring that delete out because this is allocated anywhere, so I need to make sure that it's deleted. Now, when I allocate one, you delete one. How? You write delete size. 
You don't put square bracket. The way you allocate, that's the way you deallocate. Remember, the way you allocate, that's exactly the way you deallocate. So you tell to the operating system, hey, I asked for an array, delete the entire array. So operating system will wipe the whole memory out. That's why you have the square bracket at the beginning. When you say delete size, it says, I only asked for one, delete that one. Now, if you make a mistake, if you make a mistake and delete the array without the square bracket, it only deletes the first element. The rest will be all in memory and wasted. Okay? Memory leak, essentially. We talked about memory leak. Yes. For the other delete? Gnomes? Sure. In this case, you can. <clears throat> yeah. No, no, no. Well, let me explain. Let me explain. He is saying, can we just put the delete over here? to make sure it really deletes it? The answer is that the logic dictates that the delete is called when the memory is allocated. Because in here I'm saying if it is null, no memory. No memory, no deleting needed. Else comes over here, so when I'm in else, it means it is allocated. That's where I'm deallocating. Will it make any harm to put it in here? The answer is no, because if it is null, delete won't do anything. Deleting a null pointer won't cause any trouble. So you can put it in here. But the thing is that if you put it in here, the person who wants to debug it goes under like, why, did, why is it deleted here? Like, it's possible that there's no memory allocated here. So why did the, did the, did the person who do this thought that I have to just do it just in case? See, just in case stuff means you think programming is like I get a stone and I try to hit something and I'm going to do it again so I may miss it. Computer science is not like that. When the logic is sound, it will happen. Don't think that, what if it doesn't? Let me just put it over there just in case. It's not hit and miss. If the logic follows, it will get deleted. So look at your logic. If your logic is sound, then it doesn't matter if you put the delete up. As a matter of fact, I like to put the delete in here. So I'm conveying the message that allocation only ha happens within the scope. That's why I'm deleting it in here. If I put it in here, I am telling them the allocation may happen. And then the person who's debugging is going to sit over there and say, wait a minute. In here, I have an if statement. In an if statement, either the first part happens or the second part. It is impossible. Not of nothing to happen, right? So when it comes over here, either it's null or it's not. When it's not, I delete. Why the delete is here again? You follow what I'm saying? So this but it works scenario. If you put it over here, it will delete anyway. I wouldn't. I would put it in the place it is required to be. Right? Can I put the spoon where the forks are? Yeah, it works. But I'm just being sloppy. Let's put it where it's supposed to be. How has it happened? Yeah, how, how do we for the norms now, we, we need to use that. But we didn't for size. We didn't do for size. Because I'm a bad person. I should have done it. Huh? No, it's, so that's the thing. If it doesn't, the reason is that uh, I have a good, good explanation for that. <clears throat> no, I don't have a good explanation for that. <laughs> You're right. It's bad logic. You're absolutely right. I just didn't do the size because I was lazy. That's, you're absolutely right. So in here, what I need to do is, so in here, I'm splitting size. In here, if now, Peter, now let's take a look at the logic now, OK? In here, so I'm, I'm going to say if num is equal to thing, and I'm going to say or size is equal to null PTR. OK, not enough memory. 
okay? And when it comes over here, it means both of them are created, right? When it comes over here, when it comes over here, it means both of them are created. But it's very possible that one of them is successful when it comes over here. So having that, now your logic applies. I have to bring it down here. So I'm going to say if both are success, if both are successful, which means they are both not null, come in here, do whatever you are doing, and then delete them both. If any of them is null, nothing's going to happen. Now it applies. Are we good? All right. Yes. Huh? The, the delete. Yes, uh, it deletes Delete doesn't set anything to anything. Like you're saying, it just cleans the inside? No. Delete deletes. Why do you think if it... Put yourself in the operating system shoes and the program. If I allocate 5 million integers and I ask you to delete it, you're going to just clean the 5 million and let it be in memory or you're going to throw them all out? Usually what makes sense is what happens. Okay? Usually what makes sense is what happens. What makes sense, not what you like to make sense. Okay? Lots of people say, oh, it's going to do it. No, it's not going to do it. Think. If it's sensible, it will do. Are we okay down to this point? All right. So that's dynamic memory, Alex. So it's in here, done. DMA, uh, B, uh, DMA, single and array, dot CPP. Okay. How much time do we have? So we have to start the test, the, the quiz on, we have to start the quiz on uh, 11.25, right? How long is the quiz? 10 minutes. 11.25. Guys, have your computers on, logged in, ready to go. Log into your Blackboard thing, you have the quiz, because a minute before, I'm going to say start the quiz. If you're late, you're late. It's not my fault. Okay, have your computers ready. And logged into, when I tell you cell phones at the edge, cell phones come at the edge. You pass it to the next person, all the cell phones come over here to the edge of the table. You know the rule, right? Right? <laughs> right? So, so, so I'm just telling you when the time comes. Yes, sir. Pardon me? The computer doesn't work? How it doesn't work? Did somebody use that mouse? Uh, I think I know why. Okay, so... Seriously, we have a full house? Holy schmuck! Oh, uh, you, you're not in this class? Okay, so you can switch this one. Yeah, there you go, you can go over there. There you go, thank you. <laughs> All right. Pardon me? Some people would like to catch the bus by 11, they pick up the People want to, people want to, what, what? Do one more, people want, people want to do what? No, no, one more time. People want to catch the bus at what? When the bus comes. When does the bus come? So I cannot, you want me to? Okay, I'll start 11.20. You lose five minutes of lecture because of bus. So what, so people, if you don't take it, what's going to happen? No, no. When is the next bus coming after 20, 20, 30? One hour later. So what, are you, what do you have one at the place that you go? Like, is it like you're going for a surgery or, or you're just going to be one hour late for lunch? <laughs> so if it's essential, let me know. Then I'll make it happen. Yes.
your account. So contact them. You're not going to do the quiz today. So contact uh, services and see why your account is locked. People, remember, you are responsible to have active, nice, beautiful accounts when you're coming to lab. Make sure everything's working. If your account doesn't work, you can't log in, your password is forgotten, not my fault. Okay? You have to ensure everything is set. All right, ladies and gents. Why are you leaving? You're leaving? Okay. No. No, not yet. At 11.20. Oh. <laughs> the quiz is at 11.20. Yeah. All right. So we have 20 minutes, people. Yes. No. So the bus doors open at 25. Is that what you want to say? <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's very yes. Holy mother of yes. Okay? That's that's yes. Yeah. So when you say dynamic memory, memory means address. It implies an address means pointer. Right? All right, so So let's do like good dynamic memory allocation. I'm gonna, and I'm gonna go through this. I want you to follow me when I'm doing this, yeah, and ask questions if there anything comes up, <laughs> and uh, and uh, uh, we'll see how everything works. So I'm gonna start by using a module. Utils module. And I'm going to add all the good stuff that I want to add to make sure that so it's like a, I'm a plumber, okay? And I take my toolbox with me wherever I go. That's my toolbox. I do useful stuff in it so I can do things. For example, I hate including define underline CRT secure no schmiggly dingy over there every time I'm using C string. Because of that, what I'm, what I'm going to do is actually uh, is this what I'm gonna do is this I'm gonna say I'm gonna create my own string stuff uh, quickly so I don't have to use the C string just the basic stuff okay so what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to say uh, I need uh, an int strlen that gets the size of a, a string, right? C string. I need to have that. There's not going to be any conflict between this strlen and the string uh, and strlen of string uh, C string header file. Why? Why? Oh, we use namespace SDDS. Thank you. We are using namespace SDDS. So this is a namespace SDDS. There's not going to be any conflict. If there is a conflict, I can say SDDS scope resolution SDRLIN and call my function if I want. Okay? Keep that in mind. So the next thing is string copy. So I'll go uh, string copy goes character pointer SDR copy and it copies into the destination the source that's one and the other one that I want to have is another string copy that goes up to certain length so I can specify I want only this much I'm not gonna call that SDRN copy I hate that it's C++ I can overload right so I'm gonna say <clears throat> SDR copy and I'm gonna say character pointer destination 
destination, constant character pointer, source, and in here I'm going to add uh, uh, integer length. So up to certain length. Okay, so that's going to be the next. So these three things for now I'm going to use. Afterwards, if I need string compare, I'll create it. If I, anything I want, I'm going to do the function once over here so I don't have to include that S string length thing, uh, the C string anymore. So uh, I'm just going to click on the screwdriver and say that define uh, the strnutils.cpp. It automatically creates the function body for me. And I can fill in the blanks and, and write it. And we know that, uh, who has the microphone? You have the microphone. What is the difference between C string and a character array? You can pass it. If you don't know it, immediately pass it. What is the difference pass. between a C string and a character array? Uh, so. C string has a null ter terminator. Is null terminated. C string and character array are both character arrays. C string is the following the standard that the characters end when I hit a stop sign. Where in, because C doesn't know what the size of arrays are, right? C cannot know that. They fixed that problem. They said, when I want to put characters inside the string, I'm going to end it with a null character just to... to to, to know what the size is. So that's what I need to do. To, to get the length of the string, all I need to do is to say integer len, set it to 0, and then after that I'm going to go while str len. I'm going to say while in C language, the, the person with the microphone, <clears throat> in C language what is true? In C language, what is true? One. Okay, and anything other than zero. Okay, so what is false? Zero. Zero, zero is false. That's why I do, I'm not going to put C string, not str. That's why I'm not going to put over here any condition. Because if it's a null byte, it's zero, it's false, right? It's going to stop. Right? If it's not, it's going to keep going. And what do I do in there? Len plus plus. And then at the end, I return len. That's str len, literally, in C, in C string header file. So that's str len. And then the str copy. How do I do str copy? The str copy, I'm going to go create it like that. The str copy is exactly the same thing. So integer i, I'm going to say 4. I set to zero, and in here I have to go till the end of this one, right? So I'm going to say go to source I until that thing stops, and then I plus plus. And then after it's done, what do I do? I'm going to say copy into destination character I, the source character I. It's copied. The thing is that because this, it hits, when it hits the null, it stops, the destination will not be null terminated. I have to change that character to a C string. It's simple. I'm going to go destination I set to 0. Done. It's null terminated now. What do I return? I return the destination in case somebody wants to use the return value. Done. Ta-da! If I want to do SDR len copy, what do I do? In str len copy, str copy with a length, all I need to do is to add uh, an integer len in here and say go up to end of the string and i being less than len. Done. So now if I say copy 5, it's going to only copy 5 because this condition is going to go false, comes out. Makes it null terminated, done. So this one is with length, this one, and I'm not calling it SDRN because SDRN, if it hits the length, it's not going to null terminate. But mine does. So it's not SDRN copy, it's SDR copy with an additional schmiggly dingy over there. Are we okay? There you go. Now I have the three functions I need for my string copy stuff that I want to do. 
I'm just going to compile. I'm not going to test it. I've written it 50,000 times, so it should be okay. Uh, compile to make sure that there is no mistakes. So knit, there's no mistakes. So I have my utils created, and I have it over there to use. <clears throat> Next. Next, we want to see how we can do dynamic memory allocation in a class. Okay? And the class is the microphone. The class. What is the difference between a struct and a class in C? You remember? No? Pass it back. Okay. A structure and class. A structure and a class are almost, not almost, they are identical. I'll tell you why. Okay? Let's go. So I want to create a class for an employee. Okay? Add. I already created a module for it. So that's my employee header file, and this is my employee CPP, okay? So I have everything ready. As I told you, an empty employee header file is this, right? <clears throat> to create a record for an employee, now the person with the microphone, my abstraction for an employee is this. I want the employee's name. I don't care for first name, last name, so one thing for name is enough. And then I want the, the, to assign some number for employee number. And then I want to know what is the salary of the employee. So these are the important things that I need to know for the employee. Knowing that, <clears throat> I'm going to create a structure for employee. Struct employee. OK? Now, <clears throat> tell me, what is the first attribute of the thing? What is the first member variable? What should I put over here? Name. What is the type of the name? Character. Talking stick. Okay. <laughs> it's character, right? So character what? Character. So is that enough to hold somebody's name? No, array. Array. Okay. How long? We don't know. When we don't know, what do we create? Pointer. pointer. Who said pointer? Shush. Let him speak. <laughs> Give it to the next person. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now the next thing, what do I need to have? Employee number. What do I need? The variable. What is the int, type? Int employee. Int employee number. Yeah. Okay, next. What do I need to have? Double salary. Double salary. Okay, good. Now a rule that I'm going to apply from now on till the time you are at, at the end of OP345. After that, I don't know who your prof is going to be, but this is what we follow. The, we call the variables inside the class struct class potatoes potatoes. In C++, we don't have struct. A struct is actually a class. So we call it, we call a structure a class. It doesn't make any difference. Okay, so inside a class, when you have a variable in C++, that is called a member variable. Okay, member variable. So what you have inside the class is a member variable. Or if you open an, an object-oriented book, they call that an attribute. An attribute. So when I say attribute, it means member variable. If you open C++ book, it says member variable. When you open object-oriented book, it says attribute. So all attributes in a class must start with M underline, abbreviated for member. Why? Because I said so. I am your system analyst. I am the person who dictates what the code regulation is in this, con in this company. OK? Are we OK with this? In the SDDS department, whatever. Are we good down to this point? All right. So, I need to be able to initialize this employee to values, to certain values, right? So how do I initialize it? I'm going to say void init. That initializes the employee. Because now I know that I can encapsulate data and behavior in C++, my class can have functions, unlike C language. So I can put the functions inside the, uh, the class. A function inside a class is called a member function in C++. You open an object-oriented book, it's called a method. A method is a member function. 
function. Member function is a method. You hear me saying method, it means it's not a standalone function. It belongs to a class. Capisce? Do we understand this? All right. What is the next thing that I need to do with an employee? Um, I need to be able to set the employee to something, right? Or another type of initial, um, initialization. Yeah, I can, I can set the employee. Yes. We are creating a function. It's a prototype. It's the header file. I'm just writing my wish list. Okay, you were saying? It's just a prototype. I'm going to write it in a CPP file. A module contains a header file and a CPP file. It's the header file. Okay, header file only holds the declaration of stuff. There is no definition in there. Okay, so the next thing I want to be able to do is to set an employee to something, right? I want to set it to something, so I'm going to say void set. What do I set it to? Constant character pointer name. Uh, what else? Uh, uh, integer employee number. What else? Double, double salary. Okay, so that's that. Now I'll put semicolon. It's going to ruin my thing. Okay, I'm going to go over there. Oops. It's double. Okay, so, so I have in it, I have set. After I set the employee, what do I need to do? I need to be able to show it to everyone. Right? So I'm going to display it. So what do I write? I write void display. Do I say over here display what? Constant character. Do I do that? No. Why not? Because, because, as I mentioned, if my head scratches and I scratch my head, anybody feels the scratching? No. Why? I'm scratching your head. All of you should do it. No. My head. I know where it is. My hand knows where is my head. My brain knows where is my mouth. When I talk, I talk. I don't need to mention far not talk. When I talk, I talk. When I say display over there, I'm saying display me. Display the employee. So it has access to all this stuff in the employee. If I want to say it in C if I want to say it as, if I want to teach the C++ to a C programmer, this is what I have to say. Attributes of a class are global to the methods of the class. Member variables of a class are global to member functions of the class, which means all the member functions of the class have direct access to the member variables. They don't need anything. It's part of their being. I don't need to have any explanation where my pocket is. I know where it is, and I have an eye drop in there. OK? I know that. And your pocket contains probably something else. Right? So we all have our own stuff. And we have access to our own stuff with no permission. I don't need to ask permission to put my hand in my pocket. But if I put my hand in his pocket, Probably it's going to be a slap in the face or something, right? You're just thinking slap, fist, I don't know. <laughs> All right, but baseball bat, I don't know. All right, are we okay? Yes. Are we okay? The thing is over there are very serious today. I don't know why. Are we all okay? Are we okay? <laughs> Usually, usually you all have smiles, smiles on your face. Today I'm a little scared as I did something wrong. <laughs> ah! That's my mom that doesn't know where to call. All right, so, so uh, sorry, I cannot put it on silent because I want it to ring when the time comes. What the time is? Wow, five minutes, we have to start. Okay, so the next thing uh, in here. No, no, because display knows where everything is, where everything are. Okay, display. And then after I'm done, I do not want to have memory leak, right? I have to finalize things. So I have to say over here, void finalize. Okay? All right. <clears throat> now, 
We, we, I, I made the person with the microphone. Why did I make this name constant? Who has the microphone? Yeah, I'm fine. Why do I have this name as constant? Why not just regular character name? Because I am not supposed to change it. I'm not supposed to change the name. I just want to read it, correct? Again, if I displayed this coffee to you, will it change? No. How do I force the display not to change my variables? Because it has access to all of them, right? But display's nature says don't change me. Because of that fact, there is a new syntax with constants in C++ that you put a const right after the method. Not a member variable, only for methods. It means constant, can, this display cannot change anything. It can only read them. Everything is constant to this display, but set is supposed to set them. Okay? So let's quickly go through it and set these things up. So I'm going to go add definition, add definition. I mean, yeah, I'm just, I just want to write the empty function so I can go through it. So, part of, what happened? Yeah, so, so what I want to do now is to initialize the display. So I'm going to split the screen to see what I'm doing. I'm going to split the string. At left, I have my class. At right, I have my methods. Initialize is to set everything to an initial value. So I'm going to say m name is set to null ptr. You cannot use that aggregate thingy over here because you are setting them. Okay? m employee number, set it to minus 1. Something impossible. So I can recognize that this is not a valid thing. And the other one, m salary, I'm going to set it to 0 because nobody has a 0 salary. To set them, I'm going to add the beautiful utils thingy that I have written. And now I can use my string copy and all the good stuff. So the very first thing I need to do is to allocate memory to the size of the name that is coming in. So I have to say new character. And in here, it has to be long enough to hold the name that is coming in. How do I do that? strlen of name. I add one for the null. Now I'm going to put that one inside m name. So now m name is an array with length, exact length of the name that I have over here. So I don't need to check, check for length or anything. I can comfortably say str copy into m name the name. Done. Then I'm going to say M. Uh, what do I have for the employee number? It's going to be set to employee number. And then I'm going to say M uh, salary is set to salary. And it's set. To display them, I can simply display them. So I can display every and each value. straight as they are. So I'm going to say, oh, and C out is, is in uh, IO stream, so include IO stream. IO stream. And now it's going to display, and in finalize, I'm going to say uh, delete M name. Are we okay with this? Yeah, 11.20, it means five minutes from now. Uh, the bus. Okay, I will pause over here. We'll continue the next day you're coming in. Review all these and run it. And it's going to crash if you do silly stuff because it's not a secure thing yet. So we are halfway through. So when you're coming back, we're going to continue this. Now you can start your quiz.
when I open it. Phones to the side of the table. Pass it, pass it, side of the table. And you are not to open anything but a browser with one tab in it. And one tab is, you know which one it is, right? Only one tab. Make sure that you have that. All right, I'm going to start it. Only one tab. All the phones pass to the end of the thing. I'm going to come and uh, make sure we are, we are good. You can start the quiz. Who else is there? Sorry, you don't have a cell phone. That's it. <laughs> He's not in a class? Yeah. He's not. Okay, all right. Okay. Yes. Close it and open it again. No, no, close it. Close it completely. The browser and start the browser. Use something other than Firefox. Use, I don't know, uh, Edge or, or Chrome or something like that. Close Firefox. You need your cell phone or you're logged in? You are logged in. Firefox, for some reason, is buggy. Do not use Firefox. Use Edge. Edge is essentially Chrome. They are the same. 